But we're going to be live reacting to this. Well, I'd say live enjoying this Derek Yu documentary just done by Game Informer less than a few hours ago. So without any further stalling, let's get right into it. In 2008, Derek Yu released a freeware game called Spelunky, a roguelike platform about exploring caves. In 2012, he remade Spelunky. This is his story. Since then, the word perfect has become synonymous with Derek's work. We flew to Bell Canyon Park to talk to him about it. If you don't mind trespassing, then we don't. No, I'm good. <laughs> Hey, that's the, that's the voice. Hey, my name is Derek Yu, and welcome to this is Spelunky. I'm the creator of Spelunky. Can we get some popcorn in chat? If you don't mind trespassing, then we don't. No, I'm good. It's Derek. Okay. Get some cake conas in chat. This is where Spelunky was made. I don't remember the first time that mm. I saw someone say that. I feel like I probably saw it. Derek! In conjunction with someone saying, like, another person said it was perfect, yeah. you know? Very you know, humble. When I heard the word perfect, I didn't feel like the people who said it meant, like, perfect, perfect. Like, mm. there's absolutely... Wait, is this Derek's way of saying we're gonna be, what? we're gonna be, Ooh. um, Goldie when we 799? Yeah, Dan, that's, cause that's what he was thinking about. Meant, like, perfect, perfect. Like, mm. there's absolutely... Nothing. That, I mean, oh, you know, yo, that's. I forgot about that. Improved or changed, but you know, I took it to mean that they felt like it got pretty close. Look at Derek, man, so inspirational. In search of perfect, reflecting on Spelunky a decade later. It's been a decade. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding Derek? me? Derek? He's that? Yeah, they actually went spelunking. In search of perfect. A because you had like the 2008 release. Rock and the New Balance. And the XBLA release is now 10 years old. But like, right. I guess now Why that they the got Decade Plus is gone, is that weird to you? The Jan Sport. I mean, now. Can I turn up the volume button and enable subtitles? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. That you mentioned it, yeah, because I hadn't <laughs> there, thought of it. I didn't it mean like to that. make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. I mean, I, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about Chad, all that I gotta time, get my Jan sport you know? back from um, high school. Except for every now and then. Yeah. When it comes up like this and when it does, I, I think back on it and you know, I'm just I can't believe it's I don't a, know, really grateful that I had the opportunity. It's ten years old. And a lot has changed, right? You know, I was in such a different place when I released the freeware version Tell of Spelunky, us about it, Derek. What kind of place were you in? Different place when we released Spelunky on Xbox, and then Spelunky 2 is also completely different. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I like making and releasing games is it kind of ends up being this time capsule for the different stages well, in my life. Tell us about and, it, Derek. What about... You know, I can kind of see my progress as time goes on. Indie games back then just wasn't like a thing, mm -hmm. right? And so it was very exciting. It kind of helped. It felt like we were helping to sort of direct Sludge, this you're not thing, Derek, you. and it could go in any direction at that point. By the time I worked on the uh, Xbox version, you know, I think it was starting to become more of a mature Derek scene. Derek should have been an indie game, the indie movie. games, and, uh, you know, the fact that we were getting, like, deals with Microsoft mm. and Sony and Nintendo and things like that, it was like, whoa, you know, I'm, <laughs> this, is, this is very new, this is a whole nother world. When Microsoft got involved, Look were you that. like, that's cool, y'all are a big You forget company, about that, but, man. But, like, no one plays indie games. Or were you like, oh, shit, this is what's going to be, like, the levy's going to break on this underscore? whole scene. You know, with Spelunky and Xbox, I mean, by that point, there had already been, like, a lot of success. Yeah, I, I shouldn't say nobody played indie XBLA. games. XBLA. Yeah. You think Derek's, like, sick of talking about Spelunky? Why if yes and if no? That just kind of... Crossed my mind. No, he only does one interview every three years. I got you. Okay, I'm with you. You know, it was the beginning. It right. was the beginning of it, right? And, um... Have him on the show and ask him? Who's, who's gonna tell Owl? Who, who's gonna tell Owl? Who, who's, who's gonna tell Owl? Who, who's gonna tell him? So, you know, I, I saw, like, friends of mine, like, Edmund, for example, having success with Super Meat Boy mm. on on Xbox, um, which was, you know, I think one of the reasons why Xbox was like an exciting platform at that mm. time is that there were like some big hits on there, like Castle Crashers also. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, that was definitely in the back of my mind, like this could be big, but sure. 
I always try to keep my expectations like fairly grounded. <laughs> when you're releasing a game, it's like, that's just a smart thing to mm -hmm. do. A humble Derek. A humble Derek is a smart Derek. You think they're gonna like make it to Yama? What if, what if they go deep? Do you ever see people caving in TikTok and they're like going through holes this big? How many people have played Spelunky? Do you like have access to that? I mean, like total the series? Yeah. Jeez. I mean, if you include the freeware version, it's, sure. it's got to be in the millions. That's... But I don't know exactly. What, I'm just I'm not Derek, a huge like data person. Let's not let's not be too humble. Over two billion people have played it, Derek. All right, two billion. Yeah. Um, my wife is now helping me with, uh, Spelunky 3? With, like the business side of things. Spelunky 3 confirmed? She's much more, whoa, look at that. <laughs> a big old bumblebee. Um, and, uh, so, you know, I have a better sense of the numbers these days, but yeah. like the freeware version, yeah, never slapped any kind of counter on that or anything like that. That's so wild. No he made it Spelunky 1 for free. Is that just a number to you on a screen? Or do you like try to wrap your mind around a million people? For me, it is. I think a lot of indie developers are very analytical and very data driven, but I've just never been like that. One, um, two, three. You know, I think part of it is that I came to game development as just a, a doodler, basically, like with drawing. And so that's wild. I don't know. I, I kind of treat game development like like drawing in a lot of ways mm. where yeah. Side note, not to not to hustle Derek use Instagram, um, but he has a his Instagram name is unique, but he'll just post like a random drawing. and I'll just sit there and stare at it for minutes. Like, how did you do this? You know, I'm it's just kind of like just a doodler I feel like boss quibble. Yeah, doing, yeah. You know, that's the direction that the game goes. Mm. Um, and so I think in some sense, yeah, the number of people who play the game is just a number. And so, yeah, you know, a million, multiple millions is like, for me, it's like a huge number. And that's enough, you know? It yeah. Just, yeah. It feels really As, awesome and kind of <laughs> mind blowing for sure. As like the creator, what do you think? Like, what attracts that many people to Spelunky? I forgot Spelunky 1, like, looks so different. Like when Spelunky 2 came out or they released the first gameplay, there was like a lot of pushback on the art style. And now you don't even think twice about it. Kind of mind blowing for sure. As like the creator, what do you think? Like what attracts that many people to Spelunky? That's a good question, Derek. Wow. I mean, I think when it came out, it was a new thing. You know, I think that mixture of roguelike stuff and platforming, I mean, really, I feel like it's just the roguelike philosophy, but Spelunky really made it accessible mm. to a lot of people. Good, Derek. Derek, Brett, is this your backyard? Is Bre oh, Brett's probably not here. Brett's backyard. Derek looking for inspiration. Spelunky 3. What if he just dropped it tomorrow? Brett's castle, in the, oh, Brett's castle in the distance. Cave of Munitus. Johnny Unitas' house. Let me see. With your new setup. I think it's okay. okay. Right here. Okay. Is he building a new game? <laughs> Take your time. I hope those aren't stress burps. No, they're, uh, they're just choking on water burps. <laughs> Eric drinks water, okay? Drink more water to get to seven ninety nine. dollars okay? in the end. <laughs> Stuff you don't why is he wearing two bags? Alrighty. And it, I'm going up. Why does he have two bags? Is that common when hiking? Wow, this really is like some actual spelunking here. No, oh, is that a real thing? Bagged out of his gourd. He's got spelunky three, one copy of it Whoa. in there. Big old crack right here. Two guys because the other guy filming? Well, that's not Derek's job to carry the equipment. Ooh. You okay? Yeah, I just took a rock to the back. Oh. That's oh. all good. It wasn't if Derek bad. has yeah, two bags, why can't we have right two there. back items in yeah. Spelunky? Great question. Uh, yeah. How are you going to get that tri tripod up? Well, let me stop filming. Stop filming? What? We need to see Derek. 
And our new thing will be like putting game devs and like. Chat, you think you're gonna make it out of dwellings? Yeah, this is like the new game dev fear factor. Yeah, or something like no, that. Hello Games is really in for it. We're gonna have to send those those dudes to space. <laughs> oh, thanks, toddler. You hope so? It's so weird. Cave pages. Oh my gosh. The walls are, <laughs> the walls are shifting. <laughs> What, I mean, it's like, we could joke about it because it didn't happen, but what if that's... What was his final chapter? I don't think... How many times has Derek beaten 799? I think he's come out and said he's never beaten at 799. I'm just saying, because it didn't happen. We can talk about it. Yo, what's up, CM? Yeah, no, he's never 799. At least when we interviewed him, I think he said that. What's his PB? No, I don't think... It, I don't think he's got the, the chops to get to 799. I had emailed you. It's like not a BM angle. Mm -hmm. And that was the word perfect we Alex and me were talking about. Because I've seen it used to describe Spelunky. Yeah. But I don't know, like, if I've missed this. I'm sorry. That's so, it. Like, by the know. side note, I've talked about this a ton of times. If you really like Spelunky and you don't like reading, this book's a good read. It's it's really cool. I don't know if I've ever seen you reflect on the idea of a perfect game. First off, do you remember the first time you saw someone be like, it's perfect? I don't remember the first time that mm. I saw someone say that. I feel like I probably saw it in conjunction with someone saying like another person said it was perfect. Can we get some yeah. modest emote spam in chat? Modesty. From as far as Spelunky is concerned. Humbleness. Mm. I feel like it took a while because mm. I definitely don't remember people saying that about the freeware game. And I don't feel like people said that even like right when the Xbox game came out. I think it was a term that took time for people to apply to Spelunky. Mm. But when I heard it, I was, you know, obviously like very flattered. Spelunky so 2 is in the top five that, games but, of all time, you know, to for me, me. It's also like a dangerous word. Mm -hmm. um, I think in making art, making games, and just in my everyday life, I try to, there are some pigeons behind me in this cave. I heard that if we watch this, there's a secret tip to get to 799. <laughs> Derek's face when you finally beat 799. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Did it just like come out of that crack? <laughs> All right, we gotta ask some Derek some hard hitting questions here. Yeah, I, I guess that's a good segue to me saying that I think it's important to just kind of embrace imperfection and the chaos of life. Yeah. And I certainly didn't feel like Spelunky was a perfect game myself. Yeah. Um, I think it felt like the very best that we were able to do at the mm -hmm. time, but I could so you can see, ask for especially by the release of Spelunky on Xbox, that we learned so much that I definitely felt like I could do better. I'm sure. There were vamps in the jungle? Better, but we were proud of what we did also. With Spelunky 1, the people had no expectations. With Spelunky 2, people are going to have a lot of expectations. Massive. The expectations were... Going into it, right? We're larger so than the world. Inevitably, you're going to disappoint people. Yeah. Um, but I felt that if, if people thought that Spelunky 1 was a perfect game, you know, they can keep playing that. Yeah. <laughs> right? Keep buying it over and over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just like, so it's kind of amazing. Yeah. And so I was driven more by just, yeah, what I wanted to, to build on and I felt yeah. safe. With Spelunky 1 kind of feeling like, you know, we just did a bunch of climbing to get in here. The home Spelunky base. Spelunky 1 feeling like a very secure rock mm -hmm. to stand on to then work on Spelunky 2. Do you kind of look back at the development of Spelunky 1 as like, that was a pure time or a more innocent time? You know what I'm saying? Like, is there that kind of rose tint or nostalgia to it? Liquid nostalgia. Yeah, um, Appreciate the host, Frost. Know, I, Thank you. 
I don't feel like, well, let's just put it this way. I'm, I do look back on it very fondly. I don't want to be back at that point, though, because it was a point in my life where it, I could focus just on making this one I'm game, so, and it was Why does he have two backpacks sense, on? But I also just felt much less secure as, as an artist and, um, you know, just in terms of my career and, and where I was going. And it just, it felt very, um, it just felt a lot less stable to me at that time. He's talking about Spelunky too? Developers, especially when they're starting out, I think it's easy to think about the game you're working on as like, this is it, you know, mm. this has got to kind of make or break me. This has got to be my magnum <gasps> opus. That still hurts. Um, so, I, you know, I think it's important to realize that it's fine. And I think that that's a big part of uh, not like succumbing to perfection is just yeah, thinking but about things. This here's way. the thing like, saying like the, the game doesn't have to be a magnum opus. Then the first game he released was a magnum opus. You know, after after release, I always <laughs> notice things in my games where mm. I'm like, oh, man, how did that get out there like that a little bit at the end of Spelunky one for sure? Like toward the end of development, there was art where I was just kind of like scrambling to to try to make it look good mm -hmm. um but like I didn't what? have a lot of time like and, what derek you know i would like mess up and i would lose like the high resolution version of a file or something like mm. that and one thing i noticed is that like it's that first mistake i noticed that feels the worst because up until that first mistake it does kind of feel like you did something perfect and when there's like one mistake, it kind of feels like this perfect thing with like this one blemish on it, and that feels really bad. Mm. What, what's the blemish? What, what is like, it, Derek? Find something else that is a little awkward, mm. and then something else, and then you just realize that it's nothing is perfect, and you start to actually appreciate some of these quote-unquote flaws as actually the the human touch. It's right? kind of like, like life, right? That's like my personality coming through. But I, I'd have a tough time, Chad. I don't know about you. In Spelunky 2, because I don't remember Spelunky 1. Spelunky 2, what is, what is like, what is not perfect in Spelunky 2? Like, that's the thing about when you play Spelunky, it's like, oh, that's not fair. It's, you don't say that. Like, whatever happens, you're like, oh, I messed that up. The Olmec fight. And it ends up just making the, the work, I think, feel more rich in the end. No 899? Really try to embrace that. This is definitely, I'd say, up there as far as surreal experiences go. Wait, do they have like a professional with them or are they just out there spelunking? <laughs> if he's wearing two backpacks, probably not a professional. You don't need to be a pro to climb a rock. I mean, here's a link to the video. If, if one of the mods can do documentary link that, I appreciate it. Big thanks to Game Informer for letting us watch this. There's leaving the litter there. That was too short. What the heck? Can we get an Easter egg, a shred? We may have to look up some other Derek U interviews. That was really short. Also, this could this could be is this a 799 music? Check it out. This is on uh, Game Informer's YouTube channel. A uh, big thank you to Game Informer for putting this together and allowing us to watch this live on Twitch. Much appreciated. I like, I mean, this is like, well done, like, good content. That's good content. Five years ago, we won't watch too much of this, but we'll watch like a second Or it's of it. like if a rock falls on one of those springs in the ice caves and it just bounces This up is pre-Spelunky 2. And then you walk into it and the rock hits you and you get knocked over. That's not planned at all. That's just what emerged out of designing everything to kind of share quality. <laughs> Lil like Derek. We were talking about 
doing some kind of the music. music, right? Or have it work in some kind of systemic way. But Dan, that doesn't lend. Dan says you got to interview Derek to solve your issues. Who's going to tell? Who's going to tell Crack, crack and Warrior? And it's all very well to writing melodically. This is the creator music. of the squams. Really, Eric and I, as far as the overall philosophy of the music went, I think we just kind of talked about it. It wasn't me giving him direction and then him working. Real with quick, do you think this is Derek's house? He has a bar with the headlamp, bombs, pitcher's mitt. Let's and I'm blocking a thing. Great stuff as usual. Love the stream. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate the four months. Is that too much? You I think it was more just like a. You think this is his house? And we just had a discussion about maybe the office. What does Spelunky really like? And I, you know, I asked him, or he just told me what Spelunky felt like to him. So I felt very strongly that Spelunky, even though the new one had HD hand-drawn graphics, still like blocky tiles and still very mechanically focused of a video game. How come this character like didn't make the cut? Mirror that. And then I kind of told him what Spelunky was to me. And then, yeah, he just, he just kind of went with it. I guess I felt like in the same way that the art is like hand-drawn, but still I forgot about blocky. the wheel, I man! I kind of a, were... like an HD approach to chiptunes in a way. Same philosophy, but different execution. So in my head, I was envisioning this triangle where, where in like one end you have FM synthesis, which is like very arcade game sounding. You had sample based er wait. tracker music, which is like very Eric and Derek. PC or Amiga. I just, that just sunk in chat. Like Eric live and Derek. Instruments, live band stuff in the third angle. <laughs> and then all the music would fit somewhere in between these Love you, Dan. points with like Yo, B Udi, thanks for the yeah, 35 it just, months. It just felt like a, a good fit right off the bat in that sense. Here's. What it, what is the three of them, Derek, Andy, and Eric, created an evolved version of Spelunky Classic. What about still has what does it mean to you, Derek? Co-op, solo, deathmatch, and logging daily challenges to this day. Much like the mines you explore, Spelunky is a bottomless pit of experiences, and thus conversations, such as the power of its emergent design. It's a game that means a lot to a lot of people, but before I let the trio leave, I wanted to know what one is more it? thing. Oh, what does Spelunky mean to them? Yes, Derek, what First does it mean? commercial game I worked on that was released and it was a big one it's also one of my favorite games that i've worked on just because of andy and derek being such good friends and good collaborators you think they play co-op all the time each other's work it's one of the most important things that ever happened in my life i don't think there's any other way to put it so i had gone to school for computer science and i'd done like art and i was tired of programming but i also when i came out like the economy wasn't good try to get into the game industry, like nothing was really fitting. And a lot of the companies were like, oh, do you want to program or do art? I'm like, both, can I do both? Like, no, not really. Why not? And Why so not? And like, the toys was kind of like, oh, well, this is a cool new adventure. But in some ways it was like, oh, I'm going to try something new because I'm not really sure the old things going to work. a bomb box And to next realize to it. like that it could happen and that like I did kind of get back into the industry. Um, and then just in terms of like, now I can come to GDC and people know who I am and like I, you know, will take my who is this calls chat? essentially, right? Like, I mean, my whole kind of career in video games started with Spelunky. And then also, the yeah, the game did fantastically well. So like my personal life changed a lot because of it. It's not, his name's and not Andy You stay home with our daughters. And yeah, I mean, I'm just thankful that Derek, because uh, honestly, Derek should not pick me. <laughs> right? Like, he's like, he's talking to John Blow, right? Like, and choice two is like, guy who makes wooden toys. Like, that's a pretty <laughs> steep drop off. Like, we went from like the pinnacle of like, one of the top programmers in the- Not to be, this not to be BM, I think Spelunky would be very, very different if John Blow worked on it. Industry to like, guy off the street that hasn't programmed in five years. So, like, I mean, it was like, it's wild to me that he decided to do that, and I'm thankful this guy has that he squeaks did. energy. I mean, it's been amazing, yeah. Derek. Spelunky definitely represents just a period of my life. I think that for me, at least, I don't know if it's true of other game developers, but I, I kind of tend to think about my life in terms. Did we ever of try that oh, this game? This is the Aqu Aquaria point of my life. This is the Spelunky point of my life. As to what it actually represents, like what does that time to mean to me? Like I think coming more into my own in, in term, as a game developer and figuring out 
how it was I, I want to work exactly. I feel like I learned a lot with Aquaria, Metroidvania. And like I'm super proud of that game. But uh, Spelunky was where I feel like I hit my stride. Yeah, you <laughs> think? To getting back in the saddle and making more games? Yeah, yeah, I've been working on games. And uh, of course, I think I'm, I'm always going to be working on games. And Eric's trying like, to figure out how to. I never left games the saddle. As, as a dad is, is certainly interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I, it's definitely not an accident that I had my kid after Spelunky came out. The end of Spelunky marked the end of that time and the beginning of a new one. You think he was so just like it, grinding? It felt like a good time to, to have a kid. And now it's, a, you know, then the next period is, is starting as far as game development goes. Oh, he made Dunk Lords? We played that once. He did, this guy did music for Downwell and Hotline Miami. Derek is working on something. He's let him cook. Oh, you knew what it was. You knew, you could have just given us a hint back then five years ago. You knew what it was. They knew.